Hi, this is Denise from Forceful Marco Farm. And what you're looking at is the crock pot setup to dye my breed study for this week. So it might turn out to be this month. We'll see how that goes. Is Hampshire. And this fleece is from Harry. He's one of the fleeces at Lake Farm Park in Kirtland, Ohio. And from uh, what I see, he's a really neat guy. Not really sure how old Harry is. Now, the Hampshire breed, uh, they are in the class of down breeds. So this is it's all very similar, of course, to like Suffolk and Dorset and all of those. And of course, my all-time favorite Cheviot, which is not technically a down breed. It's a hill breed, but it still retains a lot of the qualities. Uh, the down breeds uh, have a, a very springy fleece. It's not a very well-defined crimp pattern. It's more kind of wavy, sort of curly-ish. Um, and uh, they're very very felt resistant. Uh, that's what I want to say, which is one of the reasons why I love the down slash hill breeds, basically. And uh, Harry is no different here as a Hampshire. But because, of course, I'm doing... Um, as many breeds as I possibly can, even though he's clumped in with the down breeds, which I do a lot of, I still feel it's important to do an individual video on each of the particular down breeds. Okay, so uh, now a lot of times the down breed fleece is kind of like a medium length, but Harry has a really nice staple of hair. And actually the majority of the Chevy I, I work with is generally between three to four inches, which and this one's longer than that, maybe five. And so that's, that is a little long-ish for down breeds. Uh, when I get to the Suffolk, which I have plenty of, um, you'll see that it's normally not quite this long. But I do my best to, to get fleeces that are a little longer whenever possible. And I want to say offhand that Harry, the Harry fleece was a hoggett. I believe this was his first shearing. And so, of course, with the first sharing, this is going to be the softest fleece uh, that the sheep will have in its entire lifetime. So I, I do want to say this is a hogged fleece for Harry. Okay, so now the first thing I did is I, I will insert a picture of what the fleece looked like when I first took it out the bag. And this one was 2017's cut. So it had been in the grease uh, for a little while. And the down breeds and the hill breeds don't really have heavy grease fleeces. So it's not like, um, of course, a Merino that would be sitting in the grease for two years or something like that. So it really is not that bad. Um, so let's just say insert picture here. Okay, so you've seen the picture and uh, you can see how yellow the fleece is. Like I said, it's not real bad. It's not really greasy. Um, it's just got a little something there. And uh, whoever shared this sheep, I think they did a really good job. Uh, the fleece was not chock full of uh, second cuts and shorts. And I mean, he was a farm animal for a farm park. And so it had varying degrees of VM depending on you know where you pull the fleece from but I was really pleased with it because I hadn't done anything to it yet this is still it pretty much straight out the wash now this right here is a cold soak so basically I just rinsed the fleece poured the water out rinsed the fleece poured the water out sat it came back in the morning rinsed the fleece poured the water out and this is what I got so compared to that yellow I'm trying to get the camera to zoom in compared to the yellow you just saw this is what it looked like. And then there's the hot soak. And it really wasn't much different depending on what part of fleece I pull out. There's some yellow staining. But comparatively, that is really good. Now, you can see there's a little something here at the tips. And basically, that's because that's where the water drained out when the basket was sitting in the bucket. And that'll rinse out just fine, too. But I think it's beautiful. And it washed up relatively white. Okay, so now... I'm going to go ahead and put this into the dye pot. And uh, if you see my other videos, you know that sometimes 
I spin first. Sometimes I dive first. I do all kinds of things. It just kind of depends on the mood. And it, it does really depend on the fleece too because there are some fleeces that I would rather spin first um, as opposed to dying first, which could, you know, cause a felting issue depending on how I handle things. And I just, I really wish you could feel this because I often tell people that I spin in the grease. I do not spin in the dirt. So this just with the cold soak and the uh, amount of lanolin that the down breeds have, this is not at all greasy. I, I put a little hot water onto it and just to basically show you the difference. But really, after the cold rinse and, and the soak, which was left in less than 24 hours, by the way, uh, I could spin this just fine with pretty much nothing on my hands or run it through the carter. So like I said, it, it really depends on the fleece. I don't think all fleeces need to be hot scoured. Um, I just kind of feel that way. All right, uh, for comparison, I don't even know what this is. Uh, this was a little teeny sample that was inside of a friend's bag. And it's obviously a very fine fleece. You can tell by the crimp. You can tell by the feel. And especially I could tell by how much grease was in this. I mean, it was clumped together really hard. And it was really yellow. And even after a hot soak, this fleece is still really greasy. Okay, so that's just for comparison. If you have never tried the in the grease or the cold soak method or something like that, g give it a whirl. Like I said, it depends on your fleece. If you're doing some type of fine breed or merino breed, uh, you might not like the cold soak result. You, you may still find that you want to scour it. Uh, things like the Hampshire and the down breeds. Uh, the cold soak is for me is beautiful and quick method and it leaves me still feeling like I'm working with fleece and not scoured and have life scoured out of the poor thing. Okay, so here we go. I'm gonna put this guy into the dye pot and I didn't weigh it, so I'm not really sure how many ounces this is. I'd probably say about three or four or something like that. And I have three colors over here. And I'm still up in the air about which one I want to use. Maybe I'll go with the purple. Uh, this is my first pass using Jacquard's purple. And I don't know if it's going to break, but you know how much I love to break things. <laughs> and so I'm going to go ahead and try to break it and see what shades I get. Uh, see if I get a lavender I like or a lilac. Or even if I get some type of blue, that would be pretty cool too. So this will be my experiment to see uh, which way it's going to break. So I'm going to fill the pot with cold water. And then I'm going to put the vinegar into it and turn the pot on, put the fiber in, and that should make the color break. Okay, here it is in the pot, and it's not on yet. But if you look up in the corner, you can see how the purple has broken into something that's a lot like magenta. See that over there, and I'm getting uh, a really nice that's gonna be a lilac over there. So I have a really dark spot of purple here, and I'm hoping you can see this because it's the lighting is a little different in this room. Move that just a bit, but there's a little magenta over here, a really dark purple over here. And this is a lot closer to a lilac on this side over here. And then if somewhere somebody is just about cringing because I am stirring the pot. But remember, it's first of all, it's not on yet. So I don't have to worry about felling anything because the pot's not on. And secondly, it's a down breed. So the likelihood that it's going to felt with a little agitation, even if the pot is on is very low so I do all kind of like insane stuff I'm not supposed to do uh, when I'm working with the down breeds sometimes I just do that and basically I'm kind of dabbing color in places where I want it this pot or this dye session 
it's not meant to be uniform. Okay, there you go. You can see the bit of more magenta up here as opposed to the purple over here. I am not trying to get this dye batch uniform. I'm actually applying darker colors to certain places. To me, this is a lot like watercolor painting. <laughs> a whole lot like watercolor painting. I do my watercolors the same way I dye the pot. And sometimes I'll put several colors in one place. Or I should say several colors in one pot. I let the fiber trap the color. And make sure that I've got some complementary colors next to each other when they actually do bleed a bit. Okay, that should be enough. I want to make sure that I at least have one space that is going to be really dark purple. And then I can leave these other spaces. And you know you have to be careful too when you're doing this because uh, the fiber will trap the color in certain places. So if I don't move it just a little bit, what will happen is all of the fiber underneath here, the color won't seep down into that. The fiber will block it. And so all of my fiber at the bottom of the pot will be white. And so I have to just let a little bit of it down in there to make sure that there is some color down there. And there's some of it is going to be white because I want some of it to be white. I'm going to turn the pot on, let it go. And as it begins to heat, I'll have a really good sense of whether or not that is enough dye in the pot to cover uh, well, the depth of color that I would like for this particular project. Finally finished the fiber. I kind of had some other things on my plate, it took a little while. And it was really chilly for the past two weeks, so it took a while to dry. So here's the Hampshire. And uh, it turned out kind of like a marled color here. And I just got the Jacquard purple, and I tried to break it the way I break all the colors. It didn't quite work out the way I had planned. And so this particular purple is not the depth I was looking for. And so I wasn't really satisfied with how it turned out, but I mean, it's okay. And you know me, I'm not really into barber pole or marl yarns, but, uh, I mean, all in all, it's a, it's a decent yarn. And of course, the Hampshire down breed that it is, spun like a down breed, handles like a down breed, feels like a down breed. Really, really springy. And I enjoyed this particular fleece a lot. So I kind of put that on my list of down breeds that I've done. The, of course, the Cheviot, the Suffolk, the Dorset, um, the Baby Doll. And here's the Hampshire. Uh, and let me go back and retract. The Cheviot, of course, is a hill breed, not a down breed, but it's like a down breed, so I just think of it as a down breed. Anyway, I just took so long, and I apologize for this video taking so long with the, the whole moving situation. And uh, for the longest time, I didn't have my fiber stuff. And so, uh, and you know, a lot of times I am doing more than one project, and... In between those projects, it takes so long to do some of them that I kind of forget that I'm even filming. And I'm still looking for the Angora Miss video, which I'm almost certain I video last September. I can't find it anywhere. So at any rate, I'm going to do my best to try to get back on the video making bandwagon. Of course, as you know, uh, I don't do this for a living. I have to make a living some other way. And so a lot of times making a living kind of gets in uh, the way of making videos and the, the whole fiber scene. 
but I do have some things planned that I want to get to. So thank you for watching. Thanks to all my subscribers uh, and bear with me. And if you have anything you would like me to do, questions, um, any topics you would like me to cover, just let me know in the comments. I'm pretty much open to uh, making videos for whatever purpose people might need. Okay, thanks a lot, everybody. Have a great day.